Well, welcome back. I'm painting hollyhocks now. These are some white hollyhocks that are going to be right here near, near Luca. And so uh, first I use mixtures of my Dachshundine purple plus white. I have ultramarine blue plus white and I have phthalo blue plus white. And in that phthalo blue plus white I've added a little tiny tiny touch of lemon yellow just to give it a little green touch. And I start blocking in the flowers. Now these darks are the shadows in the big blossoms. I'll come back and add the pure white highlights. These are going to be white hollyhocks. The paint, this hangs with two other paintings that I have done for this collector and they both have white hollyhocks in them so we wanted to make this compatible with the others. And the painting that hangs right next to this one has some sunflowers in it. So that ties into that painting. It's a triptych that doesn't just meant to work together as one painting, but we want to have elements in each that tie them together. It's like this has a stone, this is all stone walls. The painting to the right of it has white walls and a stone wall, and then the painting on the very far right side also has stone walls. So it's just, it's a matter of designing the three pieces to go together, even though they're not meant to work as one painting. Some people will paint a triptych and it, each piece you have one, two, three pieces and it's all part of one scene. But these are three different scenes that have similar elements so they work together as a triptych. And a triptych is, just means three, three pieces that go together. And now that I've got my flowers blocked in I begin painting my leaves around the flowers. I, usually most flowers I will work in the same sequence. Flowers first, leaves last. This way my flower color stays nice and crisp and clean. If I were to paint the leaves first and then paint the flowers, my brush would pick up some of the green and make my flowers muddy. Let me show you how that it's like here. See how my brush picked up a little bit of that white right on the corner? Well, if I were painting white around green, then my brush would pick up some of that green and make the white dirty. Have some green in it, which I don't want. So this is, that's why I work in that sequence. This green is made of phthalo blue plus lemon yellow. It's a brighter green than my sunflowers. My sunflowers were ultramarine blue plus lemon yellow. So that gives me a little variation in the greens. It's just, you don't want in a painting, you don't want all your foliage to have the same, same green. And plants don't. And if you go into the garden and look, you just look at nature around you. Different trees, different varieties of trees have different color leaves. Different varieties of flowers have different color leaves, just like they have different color blossoms. It's just a matter of bringing that same thing into our paintings. We want to have variety that makes the painting interesting to the viewer some leaves up here. Again I work around these blossoms. Helps to shape them. Now I'm going to have some red orange nasturtiums in there so I'm not painting any leaves right in there. And now this my dark is just a mixture of my phthalo blue plus a little bit of liquid. Just gives me a nice cool dark in the depths of the, the leaves. Now here I'm coming back in with some of my wall color to just make a little opening in the, the blossoms and the foliage there. Oops, that's too dark. 
I can just come back and bring some of that wall color in behind those flowers. And then when I pop the highlights on those flowers, they'll really stand out. Add a little more white to my, or add some white to my lightest mixture of my phthalo blue plus lemon yellow. This gives me a highlight for my leaves where the sun's hitting them. You can see this is again, this is that bright brush. It's a square tipped brush and it's really nice because I can use the corners of it to make details. I can use it flat to cover broad strokes and it's just a very versatile brush. Once I discovered these brushes I pretty well have used them exclusively. I used to use filberts which have a rounded tip on the on the brush and I still use those occasionally but I really prefer this bright brush. And there's several different I prefer the uh, synthetic sable bristles. I don't like just the bristle brushes they're too hard and the, br the bristles just spread out and I don't they don't keep a nice shape and they're a little too hard for what I like to do with painting with making the brush strokes so I prefer the synthet synthetic sable and Dick Blick uh, Cheap Joe's all of those have some you know all of them have a different brand but if you just look for synthet synthetic sable bright brushes and it's b-r-i-g-h-t just like the sunlight is very bright brushes are so individual it's jack used to say picking out brushes for artists is like a cowboy putting on his hat everybody wears a hat differently every artist likes different brushes so it's a matter of trying different ones and you eventually discover which works best for you. Okay. I'm going to add a couple more flowers. I want to add one flower here just kind of in front of, of Luca. When you have elements coming in front of each other, like these flowers are coming in front of his body, that helps to give the feeling of depth in your painting. There's, we're painting, we're working on a two-dimensional surface, the canvas, and we want to make it, if you're painting um, Impressionism or Realism, you, we're wanting to make the painting look like it has dimension, three dimensions. So there's several tricks that you can use to do that. Now I'm coming back in and adding my pure white highlights on my flowers. Several of you have asked about what white do I use. I prefer, I use Winsor Newton Winton oil colors. I get them in the 200 millimeter tubes. No, millimeter? Are they millimeter or ml? They're ml, milliliter tubes. And I prefer their soft mixing white. It's a nice buttery white. It, it really mixes well with other colors. I, so if you're looking online at any of the art supply stores online, you want to get the soft mixing white. Not the titanium, but the soft mixing white. It's just really a wonderful wonderful mix to work with. It, it really gives just nice, it's a nice buttery white. Add a little flower up here. I'm going to add the deep centers in these hollyhocks. 
they usually have some color. Even the white ones have color in the centers, in the deep center. Then they have a yellow stamen. But what I do is this is a little mixture of magenta. And I just make my centers in the flowers. And you can see my brush strokes. I've sort of planned where my flowers are going to be. And I have my reference. I work from photographs. I have my reference material on the laptop next to my easel. So I just, I have several pictures of hollyhocks that we've taken over the years. and I just bring them up and even if I might use Pink ones is reference for my white ones, but I still know my color mixtures and all that I need, so I'm not, not real worried about that. I just want the basic anatomy of my flowers to be correct. As a medical illustrator, I am very particular. I, even though my work is impressionistic, I still want my flowers to look like they're the flowers I want them to be. I want my hollyhocks to look like hollyhocks, my sunflowers to look like sunflowers, and, and so on. I received a compliment very early on in my career from a lady that was a professional commercial flower grower. She had a big greenhouses and she grew flowers for the nurseries. And she first painting of mine that she bought, she wrote the gallery a letter and asked them to send it to me. And she said, the reason I selected your paintings is because the flowers look like there's, like the flowers that they are. So I thought that was a, just a huge compliment. Those are little things that over the course of your career that you, you get now and then. And they're just we put those letters in what we call our smile file. And you may have days when things aren't going real well and whatever, and you can just pull out that smile file and just really helps. All right, now I'm going to put the little centers in my hollyhocks, the stamens. Now, some of these blossoms are in shadow, so the center is part of my dark from my sunflowers. It's a mixture of cadmium yellow medium plus cadmium orange plus a tiny bit of mud. Again, my mud is two parts of French ultramarine blue and one part of alizarin crimson. And I know I always have said ultramarine blue, and that's our ultramarine blue that we've always bought has been the French ultramarine blue. I'm not even sure. I'll have to look in, on the and see if there is just plain ultramarine blue, but somebody asked me about that the other day, so I thought, oops, I better say French ultramarine blue. So I'm just putting my, putting my little stamens in there. And that's that little center yellow part in the hollyhock. The last thing I'll do is do my seed pods on the hollyhock, the tall, tall stalks of seed pods. And these are very distinctive. This is, these are very characteristic of any hollyhock that you see. So we'll, I just love hollyhocks and I've never, well, I don't think we've ever lived in a place where they really grow very well. So I've never been able to grow them. But, oh, in Santa Fe in the summer and fall, they are just awesome. Some of my favorite flowers. Okay, we're going to have two stalks here. Let's see, we're going to have one coming up here. And then a little one. always decide where I want to put my flower stalks. 
have a little one there. And they kind of go every which way. I have to be very careful not to make them all the same direction and stiff like fence posts. Then we're going to have a little one breaking out here. And I want one close to this one. Again, I don't I can't I don't want them to be equal distance apart looking like fence posts or a picket fence. And that's very easy. I seem to always do that. It's very easy. It's easier for me to get them all even than it is get them uneven. I have to really remind myself that this is plants don't grow evenly. The sun's hitting these. I'm going to have one coming up right in here. A light one. Now how many do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We want an uneven number. That just design-wise is always more pleasing to the eye. Make this one lighter. And here's our hollyhocks. Let's make this a little bit lighter. Going to put a little leaf over here. I really appreciate you watching my YouTube videos. Please subscribe to my channel, and if you ever have questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section. I have a blog where I show the complete step by step process of my paintings. You can see the rest of this painting as well as others I do. The link is in the description below. It's also on the final frame of my video. So thank you again for watching and you have a wonderful, wonderful day.